Praise the Lord, River of Life, and welcome to The Flow. We thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight for The Flow at the River. We are so excited to be able to come and share the Word of God with you, and we'd like to first of all give honor to, our, to God first and to our pastors who's given us the opportunity to come and share the Word of God with you, the people of the river, and those of you that are not a part of the river, but you're just watching by way of the stream. We thank you so much for joining us tonight. And it is my prayer that you will get something from the Word of God. I pray that you've already been blessed by the worship that went up before you, uh, before the Lord, and you just participated in what we are doing here at the river. And we thank God for giving us the opportunity again to come and share God's Word with you. So let's get into the Word of God tonight. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get right into it. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity that we have to come and to minister your Word, to share your Word with these, your people. We know that you love your people, Father, and we, you gave your life for us, and we are so grateful to you for that. And we thank you not only that you, give your, you gave your life, you gave us your Holy Spirit, and you gave us your living word. And so as we come together tonight, we pray that you would speak to us, to our hearts, and that the words would escape the pages of the Bible and go directly into the heart. And go into our footsteps, Lord, so that we can walk out the things that you will share with us tonight. We don't want to be just hearers of the word only, but we want to be doers of the word because we want to see your life change our lives. And we thank you so much for the power of the Holy Spirit that will go through the waves, the airwaves right now and through the into the houses and bless the people of God. And not only that, touch the people of God and where there's healing that's needing needed healing would go forth lord and restoration and deliverance through the power of the living holy spirit that lives on the in, on the inside of us and we thank you so much for the joy that comes from you lord that is our strength and we just give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor tonight in jesus name we do pray amen and god we thank you well before we get into the word of god let me just give you a background of how this message came about um, some years ago i believe it's in in 2004, the Lord spoke to me concerning some things that he wanted to share with me personally in my life. And sometimes when I have some things that are personal that the Lord share with me after a while, I'm free to share it with other people. And so tonight I'm going to share with you in a different way. I'm not going to be preachy at you at all. I'm just going to basically, we got enough preachers around here to preach circles around this place or whatever. But tonight, I'm just going to take the time to just share out of my heart some of the things that the Lord shared with me concerning waiting on the Lord. You know, um, a lot of times we, we say that we, you know, we're doing things and we want to be busy for the Lord and we want to do this for the Lord and we want to do the other for the Lord. But you know what? One of the most important things that I'm learning as I get a little older in life, I'm learning the importance of learning to wait on the Lord and not be in such a hurry. And God will do some incredible things for those who will wait on him. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Um, now, th um, this is a word that, once again, he gave me. And so I'm going to try to just read some of the things that he gave me. And then I'm going to put it into scripture to let you know that everything that he said is scripture. Whenever God speaks to you, whether it's in your personal time with him, make sure that it's biblically based. Make sure that you can go to the word of God and you can find an example or you can find the scripture that validates what you say that God is saying. Because if it doesn't, it may be a, 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 a seducing or a deceiving spirit. And so we don't want to be deceived in here. We want to know what God is saying and why he's saying it to us. So once again, the Bible says here, in my word I said, or God said, in my word I say, that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, listen to this. We can find this in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, and we will look at it here where the scripture says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Verse number 29. He gives power to the weak. In the King James it says faint. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Notice it says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. When we wait on the Lord, we renew our strength. And that's very important because many times we get in a hurry. We get in such a hurry, we want to do things. And, and it's all right to be zealous for the things of God. But sometimes we do things with, with zeal, but not according to knowledge. And then sometimes we just up and go and do things, you know, because we want to do something for the Lord. And when we do things for the Lord, you know, sometimes it, it turns out not too productive. And we do it in the strength of man because we fail to do something that is vitally important to God. That means wait on the Lord, waiting to get instructions, waiting for him to, to temper us, waiting for him to, to teach us and guide us and direct us and instruct us. Now, the Bible says they will renew their strength. Now, in, in, in the same um, book, in uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse number 15, the Bible says here, listen to what it says. He says, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. Notice he says, in returning and rest, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But listen to the response of the people. But you would not. Listen to this. Verse number 16 says, and you said, no, for we will flee on horses. Therefore, you shall flee, and we will ride on swift horses. Therefore, those who pursue you shall, listen to what it says, it shall be swift. Now, I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified Bible. They don't have it in it back there, but I'm going to read it to you in my Amplified Bible. It says, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength, but you would not. And you said, no. We will speed on our own course, on horses. Therefore, you will speed in flight from your enemies. You say we will ride upon swift steeds, doing your own way. Notice, doing your own way. Therefore, will they who pursue you be swift, so swift that 1,000 of you will flee at the threat of one of them. So basically, people doing things on their own. People are building, building ministries on their own, doing things that God did not assign for them to do. And I'm telling you right now, that's a very dangerous thing to do because once you do it, you can be doing it for the Lord. But as a result, if you're not doing it by the instructions of the Lord, you're going to do it in your own strength. You're going to do it on your own. You're going to build a name. You follow what I'm saying? You're going to do no different than what the people, of, uh, uh, the people did back in Genesis. I believe it's chapter 11 the Bible talks about when they say, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. But they didn't do it for God. They did it for them. And they wanted to make them a name. And a lot of that stuff is going on in the church today. But the Bible talks about the importance of waiting on the Lord. Waiting before God, getting instruction from Him. Now, what do you mean waiting? When we're waiting on the Lord, we're doing things like we're praying, we are waiting before the Lord, we're reading, we're studying, meditating, we're worshiping, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, we're fasting, we're interceding for the people of God and others. You know, we're confessing God's Word and His promises. We are strengthening others in our delay. And, we will call, and that will cause us to, to rise up and fight against resistance, making us stronger. Notice, he told me this. He says, strengthening others in your delay. While I'm, being, while I'm holding out and while I'm waiting on the Lord, while I'm strengthening others, he says, it will cause me to fight against resistance, making me stronger. See, you got to understand, saints of God, that strength is only built through resistance. You go to the gym. And you want to, you know, build some muscles. You want to be able to, you know, to, to look good, but at the same time, you want to be strong. You want to strengthen some of those weak uh, 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 parts of your body. And what you do, you go to the gym. And when you go to the gym, you know, you might, you might do some things, that, you know, cardios and things like that. But at the same time, you want to build. You want to build. And when you build, you're going to have to, you're going to have to work out with resistance. You're going to have to work out with weights, dumbbells or barbells or, you know, those are machines, those weight machines. And the 
the purpose for doing that is so that you can build muscles, so that you can get stronger. And so when you're doing things that are, are resisting you, when you are working against resistance, it makes you stronger. And so while you're waiting, you know, see, waiting is something that nobody wants to do. We don't want to wait. You know, we got to have it in a hurry. And sometimes when we want to purchase something, you know, I, I go in the store and I see something I want, and I, I really don't have the cash money for it right now, you know, and so I won't have to wait for it. What do I I do. I drop my credit card down on it. And, and I said, well, let's, I'll just get it now and pay for it later. And next thing you know, they're charging you interest and all that kind of stuff like that or whatever. And you're not only paying for your, your product, but you're also paying interest. And, you know, and the longer you don't pay it off or whatever, it just it accrues more interest. So, you know, but, but see, that's the bad side, the downside. So what we're saying is, is that we have got to learn how to wait on the Lord. And that's contrary to what everybody wants to do today because we want it now. We want it quick, fast, and in a hurry. I want, I want the blessings now. I want the promises now. Now, remember what happened to the, the, um, the, the, uh, the young man the Bible talks about who had two sons. You remember the scripture says one of the sons, we call him the prodigal son. He said, Father, give me that which befalls me. And the Bible says the father distributed to them to both of his sons. And so understand what he did. He went into a far country and he did what? He, he didn't want to wait until he got to a place whereby he was ready to receive that which the father had for him. So therefore he got it prematurely. And you know what happened as a result. As a result of the premature uh, uh, son, he went out and spent it all on riotous living. And you know the story. So what I'm trying to get you to understand that, that we need to learn how to wait. God knows, David said, listen to that, my times are in your hand. So when God wants, it to, wants to bring it to pass, then we ought to be willing to wait. And that's hard for a young guy. When I was a young guy, it was hard for me to wait. You know, I, I just want it and I want it now. But there comes a time when we get a little older, we understand that, you know what, uh, I need to really settle down and wait and make sure that this is what I need to do. And, you know, seek counsel at times. Seek the wisdom of God through the scriptures. And seek the wisdom of God by spending time in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he will let you know rather, you know, even in the store sometimes. When you're in the store and you're getting ready to get something, you may get that little nudge. No, no, I don't think I'm going to get that now or whatever. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, no, not now. And then, you know, you wait maybe a few uh, weeks later or something like that. And then all of a sudden you see that that thing that you wanted so bad, you know, is half price. And you say, oh, my God, I'm so glad I waited on the Holy Spirit. Because, listen, the Holy, hallelujah, glory to God. I hope you all getting something out of this. God will perfect that which concerns me. He is concerned about every little detail about our lives. And if you was to consult him, the scripture says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. So when you acknowledge God, he gets involved in your life. He gets involved in your finances. He gets involved in your marriage. He gets involved in everything that's, con you want to decorate your house? Ask the Holy Spirit how to do it. I remember the time before that, 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 that my wife had cut some cabbage up and, you know, she did, she fried the cabbage, in, not fried, it. yeah, she did. She fried the cabbage up and it was good. You know, we had nice cabbage with, um, with, uh, what well, she put some sausage in it. Oh man, that thing is so good. And, you know, she puts bell peppers, another thing in there and man, it was good. But she had some cabbage left and she was, she didn't want to throw it away. So she just said, the Holy Spirit just spoke to her and said, you know, make some, make some uh, uh, with the coleslaw. And she said, well, I never made coleslaw before, you know. And so he taught her how to do it. And man, that was greater. <laughs> so, so see, God knows all these things. You know, many of you right now, listen to me very carefully, beloved. You know, many of you right now, the first pain that comes into your body, the first thing you do, you go to the, ask, you go to the medicine cabinet. Or you may call the doctor. I got to go get this checked out because this could be something, you know, something very seriously. And, and, you know, we don't consult with the Holy Spirit. But when we consult with the Holy Spirit, he'll tell us something that we need to eat. They say, your body is lacking, it's deficient in this particular thing. I remember the time before, you know what, I felt like I was having some kidney pains and things like that, and he told me exactly what to do. He told me exactly what to do. And I went and did it, and guess what? It cleared it up. And so, and it wasn't no medicine. It was just something that I needed to take, something I needed to drink. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so when we wait on the Lord, when we turn to him, when we consult with him, he tells us what we need to do. And as a result, things get better. Because see, God's not going to lie to us. He's, he's not going to, he's not, amen. He's not going to tell us to do something and it doesn't work. 
Praise the Lord. So therefore, understand, folks. Now, I don't know how I got off on all of that, but I was talking about strength and resistance. But therefore, strength is built through resistance. Hallelujah. And this is how you are strong in the Lord. The Scripture tells us in the, uh, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might that we ought to put on the whole arm of God. A lot of times we are told, be strong in the Lord. But how do we be strong in the Lord? How do we do that? We stay with the things of God. We build our strength through resistance. You know, it, it's so easy. Listen, let me give you an, another example. When, you're, when, when, when somebody, like, say, if, if somebody cuts you off on the road or maybe someone stole a park from you or something like that, and the, the, the thing that you want to do, you want to, you know, you want to get in the flesh. You know, all of us are guilty of that. We want to get in the flesh. But one of the things that we ought to do, we ought to eat a fruit of the Spirit. Hey, eat it. That's right. Eat it. It's called temperance. So, therefore, you know that if you get it, you're prone to go off, make sure that you eat some more temperance. Make sure you eat it. And so what, what do you mean eat temperance? How can you eat temperance? That's a fruit of the Spirit. That's right. You need to take some more of that and eat it. Amen. What do you do? You just make yourself sit down, be quiet, and shut up. And every time you do it, you gain another victory. You gain ascendancy over your flesh. Every time you eat it, when you have the opportunity, because these basically are opportunities, when the Holy Spirit tells you, stop, don't say a word. Amen. You know, uh, just, just a few days ago, I saw something. I, man, I tell you, I saw something. It, it, I ought to be absolutely honest with you. It was, a, it was a young lady, and she was looking, you know, she was looking pretty good, you know. <laughs> and so she was looking good. And so I was getting ready to take another look, and the Holy Spirit said, stop. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what he said. He said, stop, don't do that. You're not that. And you know what? From that one point, I'm telling you right now, it's like, oh, man, he is really concerned about us. He is really concerned about our lifestyle because he knows the, the proclivities, as my pastor used that word, the proclivities that we have towards things that we should not look at. You follow what I'm saying? And so, therefore, it's called temperance. You, you're eating the fruit of the Spirit. You know, if you're going to get angry, you, you're subsiding, you're subduing your flesh and telling it, no, we're not that person anymore. We don't do that anymore. So we're not going to do that. You follow what I'm saying? You know, sometimes where you want to get depressed and down in the dumps and, and discouraged and everything like that, eat you some joy fruit. Amen. Go eat you some joy fruit. Well, how do I do that? Well, if you have to, put your music on. Put some spiritual music on and just walk through the house, dance through the house and praise through the house, hallelujah through the house, shout through the house, amen. And that's what you do. You put your joy on because the joy of the Lord is your what? Your strength. And what are we talking about? Waiting on the Lord and he will what? He will renew your strength, saints of God. Now this is the word of God. This, is, this works, I'm telling you. It absolutely works. Praise the Lord. So let's stay with the things of God. Hear the word of God and repeat and rehearse over and over again the promises. Abraham, in the midst of adversity, war, plagues, famines, tests, and trials, reminded God of his promises. This kept him steadfast. This kept him stabilized. It's kept him anchored. He remembered the promises of God. God took him out and showed him the stars of heaven, the sands on the seashore, and that marked his mind. And so every time he got discouraged, I'm pretty sure there were times that he had his doubts. But guess what? Only thing he had to do is just go and look at the stars and say, God, you said my seed will be like the stars of heaven, like the sands on the seashore. Praise the Lord Almighty God. You got to understand, folks, that God is faithful to do what he said he will do. Amen. Remind yourself that you are a child of God. Now, once again, Every time a promise is fulfilled, it strengthens his faith to believe God more because he trusted God. That's what he did. He just trusted God. Well, how did he get there? Well, you know, uh, the, 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 you got to understand that when you believe God and God comes through, what happens is that gives you something that we call experience. Let's look at it in the book of Romans. In Romans chapter number five, the Bible says this, Romans chapter five. Let's go there right quick. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom? Also, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. 
You follow what I'm saying? That word hope in another passage is experience, and hope makes not a shame. You understand, folks, so when God does something and comes through you for the first time, that gives you hope for the next time. And so as a result, when you go through the next uh, uh, trial or when you go through the next thing or challenge that you have to go through, you have hope because you just go back and rehearse your past victory in God. Well, God, as I waited on you, you did this for me the last time. That's what David did. Remember, David rehearsed his past victories. What did he do? He says, oh, Saul, um, uh, you know, your servant went out and fought with a lion and a bear, and God helped me. The same God that delivered me out of the, the paw of the lion, of the bear, rather, and the lion, guess what? He will deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. So you got to understand, when you rehearse the past victories, you begin to have faith and strength for the next one that you're facing. But you got to do what? You got to have hope. Amen. So those experiences, don't throw those experiences away. Don't throw it away because they will serve you well in the future. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now, let's go on from here because my time is quickly running down. Praise the Lord. So Abraham believed God. He trusted God. At times he had his doubts, I'm quite sure. We all do. And did not do everything right. Abraham did not do everything right. Even though he's the father of faith, he didn't do everything right, but he trusted God and God honored him for that. Now, we must trust, rely, and rest and be steadfast and unmovable. Once again, trust, rely, rest. Look at Psalm 37 and 7. The Bible says in Psalm 37 and 7, listen to what it says. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prosper in his way. Notice what he says. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. So what do we do? We're, we're learning how to renew our strength. We're learning how to mount up with wings as eagles. When we rest in the Lord, when we wait patiently for him to bring his promises to pass, guess what? He will do it, and he will do it in his time. The problem is, is that we don't understand that our times are in his hand. We want it, and we want it now, as I said before, but God's not like that. He wants to take you through the process and take you on a journey while you're waiting for him to bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we don't have time to talk about process and journey right now because I'll get sidetracked and I won't finish this message. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, so therefore, you trust, you rely, you be steadfast and unmovable. Hear the words of the Lord released from people who have spoken into your life. Hear it over and over and over again. Speak things that they speak to you and watch God bring them to pass in his season. Now remember, the Bible says the vision is yet for an appointed time, but afterward it will speak. The Bible says it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, he tells us to wait on it. You can find that in Habakkuk 2, verse number. I'll tell you what, let's turn there right quick. Let's turn there right quick. Habakkuk 1, Habakkuk, Habakkuk or Habakkuk uh, chapter 2. Notice what he says. And this is the part that everybody who quotes the scripture always miss. Notice what he says. He says, I will stand on my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. In other words, I'm waiting on God. I'm just going to sit here until God speaks to me. Notice what he says. I'll watch to see what he will say to me. And well, I will answer when I'm corrected. Notice what it says. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tables that he may read, run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. And though it tarry, wait for it. Notice what it says. It will not, um, can you go back to verse number two? Verse number two. It says, though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. Notice what he says, and it will not tarry. So the vision is for an appointed time. But the thing about it, he said, I will wait. I will set my watch. I will wait to hear what God is going to say to me. So as a result, folks, we got to, these scriptures go together. You can't separate them. So we can talk about writing the vision and reading the vision and all that kind of stuff like that. But wait a minute. He says, wait. It's going to come in this time. But you got to wait and hear what God will say to you first. And that is so important, hearing what God has to say, learning to listen to God, learning to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, listening for his voice. I was talking to my wife the other day. We were sitting at the table. We were discussing something. And, and, and all of a sudden, I kind of lifted my ear just like that because I heard the word of the Lord say something to me while we were talking. And it was just like I, I, I used my ear, but it wasn't something that came to my natural ear. I was hearing it 
in my spiritual ear. And I heard, and I said, I heard that. I heard that. And I repeated what he said to her at the same time. So the, 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 I'm learning to develop my ability to hear because, folks, in these days and times and hours in which we live, you don't have time for television. You don't have time for a lot of the stuff that we delight in. We've got to hear a clear word from God. We've got to get clear direction of God to navigate us through the season in which we're in right now, in which we're about to embark upon. So therefore, we need to learn how to cultivate. You know, uh, learn how to, say, you know what the Lord told me one time before? He said, so many people, are, are, they, they don't like to be, they, they don't like to, to be in a quiet atmosphere because they, they enjoy the noise. And the reason why they enjoy the noise is because they don't want to hear me talk to them. And so I'm getting in my car, I'm driving in my car or whatever, I, I want to hear. I wash dishes a whole lot. I love washing dishes because I find that sometimes God speaks to me while I'm washing dishes. And I understand now why he speaks to me while I'm washing dishes because as he speaks to me, he's washing me. Just like I'm washing the utensils, the spoons, the forks, the, uh, uh, the, the, the plates and things like that, the pots and everything like that. I, I vision, envision God washing me with the water of the word of God while I'm washing the dishes. And so as a result, I enjoy doing it. I have no problem with it. I've been doing it a long time too. And, and, and matter of fact, but nevertheless, I have no problem with it because I hear God speaking. Matter of fact, the other day, I heard something the other day while I was washing dishes. And so the thing about it is, is that it's, it's just, a, a, it's quiet in my home. I, I just, that's, that's, it's peaceful in my home. God can speak and we can hear because it ain't nothing going on. By the time some people come in the house, they've turned that television on and they, they, uh, they, they plop on that couch and there they go, you know, as far as that's concerned. Now, if you watch a whole lot of television, listen, I'm not, I'm not barking at you. I'm just saying this is, this is one of the things that I, pri I, I prioritize above all else, wanting to hear the voice of God. And I remember the time when God spoke to me and told me, listen, you don't want to hear my voice, but you don't want to read my word. So that's, that's, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. You want to hear a voice speaking to you, but you don't want to read the Word of God. But you need to read the Word of God to validate rather who is, what's being said is truly God. And if it's God, you ought to be able to find it in this Word. Amen. I got to go. I got to go. Now, notice this. We talked about Habakkuk. Amen. Now, two things, two, two people I'll talk about. Um, remember, we got to find out how to wait upon the, that, uh, the importance of waiting on the Lord. It was Saul, I believe it was in 1 Samuel, uh, in 1 Samuel maybe chapter 15, what was it? In chapter 13 rather, Saul was told to wait seven days until Samuel came back and he will tell him what to do. And the Bible says that he forced himself. He did not wait on the Lord. He did not wait on the prophet of the Lord to give him further instruction. And as a result, he got in trouble with God. And then it was Israel in that um, Exodus chapter 7, 32. The Bible tells us that they did not wait for Moses to come back down from the mountain. And as a result, they got in trouble as well. So we get in trouble when we don't learn how to wait. We need to sit our fannies down and just say, Lord, I'm going to sit here until you speak to me. Because I want to hear you clearly. I want to know what you require of me. Now, in my closing don't get hasty to do things on your own out of season. The Bible says, wait for it, though it tarries. Wait for it, for it shall speak and not lie. God will get the glory and you'll enjoy the promise. Once again, if you wait for God to bring it to pass, God will get the glory and you will enjoy the promise. But you got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Amen. Something else I'll share with you before we go. The father can't be manipulated. What do you mean? He said this to me. Father can't be manipulated. And he says, James said, God cannot be tempted with evil. We try to corner God and make him do things or bring his promises to pass for us. For example, we get an attitude, stop praying and do things that we are not to do because we are angry with God. But God says this, getting angry Pouting, refusing to pray and fast will only delay the promise more because God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Not occasionally, but diligently seek him. So when we wait upon the Lord, our strength is renewed if we hold on to the promise made without doubting and pouting. Because it's easy to do that because when God don't come through, when we think he should come through, guess what we do? We doubt and we pout. Amen.
Praise the Lord. So God is also faithful to perform his word. So when we wait upon the Lord, our strength is renewed and we, as we hold on to the promise made without doubting and without pouting. Faith believes and says he will. So it says when God does it, not if God will do it. Fear questions whether he will be faithful or not. And this, my friend, is sin. It is out of God's character to lie to us. He swore by himself that what he promised, he was also able to bring to pass. So stand, stand in faith and shout before doubt and tell doubt to get out. For the things are near and the promise is at hand. And you will know that God is the great I am when you make a decision to stand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's faithful. He's faithful. God is faithful. And if you have a promise from God, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart as you wait. Father, thank you so much for this word. Thank you for this time that we've had together with these, your people. It is my prayer, Father, that the things that were spoken and shared tonight would edify, would bless, will encourage the things that I shared out of my spirit and my heart tonight, Father, I thank you so much that there are not things that I concocted, but this is something that you spoke to me through the words of the Holy Spirit as I sought and waited upon you. So, Lord, I just pray tonight that everyone that hears these words, that you have spoken to them through this vessel that you've chosen. I didn't bring myself here today because I wanted to be here. I brought myself because I was commissioned to be here. And that's by your servant, the pastor of this ministry. And so, Father, I thank you so much for helping us to lay aside the weight and the sin which does so easily beset us so that we can run with patience, stripping off all those things, Lord, that encumbrances, that, that, that hinders us, Lord. Rather it's television, Lord, rather it's the internet, rather it's the social media, rather it's the news media, anything, Father, that holds us back. Rather it's relationships, oh God, whatever it is that's causing us not to spend the time in your presence waiting before you, I pray, Father, that folks won't get angry with me or you, but, Father, that they will set themselves aside and find the place of quietness and rest and in confidence. I had to do it, Lord, and I'm still so far from the mark, but I thank you, Lord, that you will help those who wait upon you. You will renew our strength, Lord. We all get weak. Young men utterly fall, Lord. We all stumble. We get tired, Lord. We get battle weary. But Lord, you help us renew our strength when we learn to wait in your presence. So we thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. I pray that people will hunger and thirst to hear your voice. We need you in these days and times in which we live. We need you, Lord. Pastor Deborah preached a few weeks ago about are you listening? And Lord, forgive us because many of us have not listened. But I ask you, Lord, give us ears to hear. Give us ears to hear. Be that voice behind us that's saying, this is the way walk ye therein. Thank you, Father, for your living word. You said man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, Lord, please continue to speak to us. We will hear, we will listen, and we will obey. And, Father, when we wait upon you, you renew our strength. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, and we thank you, dear Father. If you're watching, and you should be watching, 
I pray that you don't turn away as of yet because there's somebody that God's been speaking to while this message has been being shared with you. And the Lord's been speaking to you. He's been tugging at your heart. He's been tugging at your heart as you listen to other messages and other ministries. God is speaking to you. Any reason he's speaking to you, he's calling you. He wants you to come into the body of Christ. You know, nobody can come unto God except he draws them. And so right now, that tug that you're feeling right now, that voice is calling you to give up, to come into the kingdom of God. God wants you saved. It is not his desire that anyone should perish, but all to come to repentance. And today, you can have eternal life by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. For the scripture tells us that if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with all our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you, my friend, will be saved. The scripture went on to tell us that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. We talked about waiting on the Lord tonight. But the Lord, my friend, is waiting for you. If you're not born again, you can just pray a simple prayer and ask the Lord to come into your heart to save you, to forgive you of all your sins and turn away from a lifestyle of sin and turn to the true and living God. He sent your, his son to die for your sins so that you can have eternal life. When you leave here, you be in the presence of God forever and ever. So you pray and ask God, save you, deliver you from sin. In Jesus' name, amen. God, we thank you. All right, bless the Lord. This time for us to give. We always do that here at the river. We are givers here at the river. Not only do we receive, but we give. We disperse out. And we thank God for our pastors that have lived such an exemplary, right, exemplary life of giving. Amen. They're blessed today simply because their give and we are blessed as a result because we give as well the scripture tells us give and it shall be given unto you in good measure pressed down shaking together and running over will men give unto your bosom and as we give tonight we want to make sure that we're giving trusting God and believing God to do what he said he will do fulfill his promise and taking care of his people because we give to the work of God amen glory to God and you have a, a number at the bottom of your screen right now. You can text by giving. There's other ways you can go on that website. And you can also come to the church during the week. You know, we, we have masks up, but you can come to the church and you can give as well. And then we have, uh, I think it's something, a text to give. I don't use that one, but nevertheless, amen. But you can give that way as well. Praise the Lord. And we will certainly be happy to receive your gifts and your, 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 your sacrifices, amen, on behalf of the kingdom of God. And not only that, you know, the pastor's been talking to us about being a blessing to other people. Not only the, just the church, but other people. Amen. You see people on the street. You know, folks are, are homeless and jobless and all kinds of things like that today. So make sure that you remember those people that are out on the street standing at the corner. Some of them, you, you know, you, don't discriminate to where you're going to give. Just, just bless the people of God. Be an agent of blessing and God will trust you with more. Amen. That's all I'm going to say about that. And so I want to thank you so much for taking the time. To, uh, to be with us tonight and two people I'd like to give special thanks for. I've already thanked them before, but I want to thank them again. Uh, Andrea and, and, and Adrian is behind the cameras and, and behind the pro presenter tonight. And I thank them so much for their time and taking the time out of their office and come and help us out with the media production. Amen. God bless you girls. Thank you so much. Amen. And so that's all I'm going to say tonight. And so thank you so much. Until next week, we'll see you Sunday. Don't forget, we got two locations now right here at the River Orlando and the River Palm Bay. Be at one of the services. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Amen. Bless you. Shalom.